In this movie, I want to continue with the blend tree that we started in the previous movie. So we created this 2D freeform Cartesian blend tree, which is going to chart the movement of a character along two different axes, vertical and horizontal. To achieve that, I need to create two parameters. You can see here in the object inspector that this blend tree is based on two parameters. Right now it's blend and blend. It refers to the same parameter. We need to use parameters so that our C-sharp script can easily interact with this blend tree and control its properties. Over here you can see we have the parameters tab inside the animator window and this will allow us to define the parameters that's going to control the motion of the character through the blend tree. Right now we have a parameter called blend. I'm going to rename this to horizontal because this floating point value is going to chart the motion of player input on the horizontal axis that is, as we've seen, the left and the right axis, negative 1 is left, 0 means pressing nothing, and positive 1 means right. I'm going to add a second parameter here, which is going to be a floating point parameter, that is a fractional number, and this is going to chart the vertical axis. So I'm going to choose vertical here. So we have two parameters, horizontal and vertical. I'm going to map these to the blend tree here. So right now on the x-axis, so the position x, we're going to map this to the horizontal parameter and the y-axis, that is up and down, this is going to map to the vertical parameter. So I'm going to click in here and off screen appears a context menu. I'm just going to choose vertical to select the vertical field. So now the blend tree has two values. So here we have blend tree and we have horizontal and we have vertical. Now these are going to control the motion of the blend tree, but of course we have these motion fields which you can see here. So we have the motion fields. Right now we have just one motion field. This is going to define the different states of our animations and we're going to be able to blend between them. Now we actually need nine motion fields and the reason for that is because if we think about the different states the character can be in, the character can be in an idle state, meaning that they are standing still the character can be walking or the character can be running. But for each of those three, there are three other states. For example, when the character is standing still, they could be standing still and looking forwards. They could be standing still and turning on the spot. They could be turning left or right. So we have the similar principle for the walk and the run animations, which gives us three times three. That means nine motion fields. So I'm going to create these nine motion fields now by choosing the plus icon and choosing add motion field. When I add the second one, a graph begins to appear here. I'm going to scroll down. You'll notice that we have two dots here, one here and one here. These correspond to our two motion fields. I'm going to add the remaining ones. So I'm going to add the third one and the fourth and the fifth, six, seven, eight, and then the final one, which is nine. Let me confirm that this has happened. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. So now we have a total of nine motion fields. What I want to do now is to go ahead and start to define these motion fields, plotting them within this graph area. Now to get started at assigning these motion fields, I'm going to scroll down here inside the object inspector and we can see that we've got a range of different motion fields. Now when we think about this carefully, we know that we need nine motion fields because when the character is standing still, they could be turning left or right or looking forwards. And when they are walking, they could be walking forwards or walking left and then walking right and the same for running. So what we want to do is we want to start to map these different values onto our axes. So what we have here is we have the ability to start off with 0, 0, we have these negative 1 parameters for the X and the Y fields. When we are standing still and turning left, we want to be 0 on the Y axis because it's the bottom most or the slowest mode. And on the X axis, when we're turning left, that corresponds to negative 1 on the keyboard for the horizontal axis. And we know that the horizontal axis maps to the X axis. So for this, I'm going to choose negative 1 here. For the X axis, when we're looking forwards, that should be zero. And again, when we are standing still and turning right, the x-axis should be one. And again, for the y value here, that should be zero. So we have these basic parameters here. Now, we want to repeat this process for run 
and walk. So for walking, again, this is going to be negative 0.5 rather, because it's halfway between 0 and 1. 1 is going to be running. So we're turning left and walking, we're walking forwards, and then we're turning right and walking. And run is going to be 1 for the y-axis here. And when we're turning left, it's going to be negative 1. When we're walking or running forwards, it's going to be 0. And when we're running and turning right, it's going to be 1. So we have all of these different motion fields. We can see how these look by scrolling up and taking a look at the graph here. So the bottom row here represents standing. And then here is walking. And then the top one is running. This is standing and turning left. That is the middle one at the bottom where the red dot is. Left of that is turning left. Right of that is turning right. If we move up on the vertical axis, we move into the walking range. And then up above that, we walk into the running range. So we have these nine motion fields on our map. I can move to the blend tree if I need to and adjust, for example, the horizontal and the vertical values. As I do that, you can see the values on the sliders changing for the blend tree. And in the object inspector, you can see the red dot moving between the different fields. This is going to show us how the animations on our character model are going to blend between the different nodes within the blend tree. How much of each animation is going to be thrown into the mix. So I'm going to set these values back to zero here so that these are put back to their default. If I now scroll down inside the object inspector, we still have the different animations to assign to the motion fields themselves. The different fields on the left you can see right now are all set to none because no particular animation is assigned to them. Now we're going to fix that. To assign an animation to a motion field, I'm going to move my mouse down here inside the project panel and scroll down. And you can see under the third person character animation section, we have our different animations and we need to choose which ones are going to be assigned to the motion fields. So we know that zero negative one for the negative one for the X axis that is, is standing still turning left. So I'm going to move down here to where it says stand turn and expand that and move to the turning left field. We know that turning right is going to be the one where the X axis is one. So I'm going to choose turning right to that field there. And we know that the center one is simply standing still or idle. So that's human idle. So I'm going to expand that and drag and drop the idle animation to that field. That completes the standing. Now I want to move on to walking. So humanoid walk and expand that and scroll down and grab the walk animation. That's going to move to the center one here. And again, turning left while walking is going to be walk turn. If I expand that, you can see we have left and right. The left again is going to be negative one and the right will be positive one. We're going to repeat this procedure for the running. Here you can see we have humanoid run. So I will expand that. Humanoid run will be the center one that is running forwards. Negative one is for left and positive one for right. So run turn here inside the project panel. I'm going to grab that, move that to the left field and then grab the right one and move that to the right. And you can see that what we have here is now a complete assignment of all the different motion fields. And I can test my animation simply here on the object inspector by pressing play on the preview panel. You can see that by default, the character is just standing there in the idle state. But if we look at the animation graph and take a look at these parameters, we can see why that is the case. Because right now the value is vertical and that is zero and the horizontal is zero, meaning standing still looking forwards. If I grab the vertical value, the up and down, and I start to increase that slider, you can see that at about the 0.5 mark, we are walking, and at 1, we are running. We can combine or blend that with the turn animations. So for the horizontal axis, I can increase that to 1 to turn right. I can, I can decrease it to negative 1 to turn left. And if I then move down through the different vertical axes, you can see how that's blended between that area of movement. So we now have the ability to completely control the walking forwards and the sideways movement of this character by using these two parameters from the blend tree. The question that now remains is how can we can also control this from script? And we'll see how to do that next.